point, um, we're going to get some uh, be a good audience for Zach, the filmmaker, and Amanda, the stock presenter. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to my presentation. We were given $100,000, and we're trying to make money in the stock market. Sheldon shaking stocks. Obviously, the market in these past three months has not done very well. It's been very bearish. So. My first company was AIG, American International Group. It was founded in 1919 by Cornelius van der Star. It's a nice name right there. Um, he started it in China, and after success over there, he moved the company over to other foreign markets. And the American market wasn't doing well. He handed that over to this guy named Maurice Greenberg. Greenberg kind of tried to change the direction of the company. I guess he succeeded for a while, but obviously AIG failed. recently. Um, the reasons why I invested in AIG, um, it crashed, the share price was very low, there was promise of government intervention, there's going to be all this money injected into it, and I figured that would help the stock price go up, but that didn't happen. Usually things in the real world don't work out as idealistically as you'd like, and I learned that firsthand from AIG. It was a very bearish stock and kind of ruined my portfolio. <laughs> um, over here is where AIG is failing. Right here is where the government bailout plans are going through. And then the, all of this is just everyone realizing that it's not doing anything. Um, my next stop is Barrick Gold <coughs> Corporation. Barrick is a gold mining company. Um, it was started in 1983 in Toronto, Canada. They were focusing on North America, but they eventually expanded to other markets. They now have mining places in five different countries, North America, South America, Asia, Africa, and Australia. Um, they're the world's largest mineral reserve company, so it's a pretty big company. Um, I invested in Barrick because gold was supposed to go up. People had speculated that inflation was going to happen. It didn't happen, but if it did happen, commodities such as gold would have gone up. And that didn't really work out the way I wanted it to either. That went too far. Um, Barrick is making a few adjustments within their company. They, um, before I invested in the company, I didn't realize that they were kind of, they get scolded a lot for hurting the environment, but they're trying to go a little bit greener now. They've implemented this Equus software into all of their mines, which basically tracks mining damage and how, so they could like read the graphs and try to prevent future damage. So I think this is when they implemented that software. So, my next company, Exelon Corporation. It's an electricity corporation. Um, it was founded in 2000 as a result of a merger between two other corporations, Pico Energy and Commonwealth Energy. Um, it's in Pennsylvania and Illinois, headquartered in Chicago. Um, I originally invested in this because I thought Commonwealth Energy was like Con Edison, like Com Commonwealth Ed is what it's called, and I thought it was Con Ed, but it's not. It's in Illinois, but it was actually the uh, the stock with the highest relative strength in my whole portfolio. Still lost five thousand dollars, but it did all right, I guess. Um, over here, this big jump. There was an energy conference at the University of Pennsylvania, and Exelon played a leadership role in that conference, and there's a little bit of hype over that. Um, next one, International Business Machines. It was started in 1891 by Herman Hollerith. 
It's one of the only technology companies that dates all the way back to the 19th century, so it was one of the first. It started as the Tabulating Machines Company, and then in 1911, there was a merger between <coughs> Tabulating Machines and two other companies, forming the Computing Tabulating Recording Company. It's a mouthful to say, so in 1924, they switched that over to International Business Machines, I think is a much better name. Also, this icon is blue. Um, IBM is also often referred to as Big Blue. Just a little tidbit to throw in there. Um, it's a blue chip company. They offer dividends. It's a pretty safe thing to invest into, which is why I did invest into it. And also, the advancing technologies. You know, it's always good to have in society. Um, over here, there's a big drop. Basically, just the market taking its toll on IBM. And right here, there's a new computer development program. And over here, they're um, putting broadband internet into telephone lines. That's still ongoing. Um, they're trying to make it more accessible for people. And this is just a little extra thing. I grasped IBM versus the Dow Jones and the uh, S&P, and they basically all follow the exact trend. None of my other stocks did this. Not many stocks do this. I guess the big ones do, but I just thought it was interesting. Like Every single little curve, they all basically do the same thing. Um, Sandridge Energy was my alternative energy source. The energy crisis this summer. Um, I thought that people were going to stop using gas as much, but of course gas prices have come down a lot. Sandridge focuses in on natural gas. Natural gas is very inexpensive, sometimes even free, but it takes costly and advanced pipelines to transport it, so that's where the drawback is. But with like some initial investment money, natural gas could be a really cheap resource but that didn't follow through as I had hoped. It was founded in 1984. Um, the current CEO is a man by the name of Tom Ward. He's an Oklahoma, Oklahoma City billionaire. He was listed in Forbes top 400 richest people in America. And the initial public offering was made on November 5th, 2007. It's really recent. Um, for a while, after the initial public offering, from February to July of that year, the stock was just going up, like a steady increase, and it was doing really well. But the economy, everything took its toll, especially on this small company. And it was definitely the most bearish stock in my portfolio. It ended at about $4,000, which is terrible. So this is my final portfolio. Started at like a hundred thousand, ended at forty six thousand. Pretty bad, but I guess I took some risks. Um, there's a lot of volatility and inconsistency in the market throughout this time. You know, people were kind of not sure what to do with their money. You know, what is this worth? Should I buy? Should I sell? Bid ask spreads, no one knew what to do. And, you know, the Fed, the SEC, everyone's trying to regulate the market, but it wasn't really working. They're trying to prevent all the short selling, all the insider trading, but that's kind of hard to do. Um, I learned a lot from this project. Probably the most, the thing that comes closest to home for me. I always hear my parents talking about the college fund. The college fund this, the college fund that. I never even knew what my college fund was until this project. Now I guess I get to have a little bit of say in it. I told my parents a stock that I want to be in the college fund and they might follow through with that. And I want to thank you guys for your time. Are there any questions? Mark? Uh, what stock do you want to have in your college for you? Well, um, I put Mac in it, like a little 
couple weeks ago, and it's gone up, um, I think, like $10 or something. Did you say Mac, you mean uh, Apple? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Gray? Yeah, um, you bought Barrett Gold, which yeah. uh, I think a lot of students and a lot of people that do this for a living thought the gold and commodity stocks would be a good buy back in September. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for you. Yeah. And as we see, your final value reflects that it definitely didn't work out for you. What do you think will happen to gold prices in the coming months? Do you think deflation is going to set in and gold prices will fall, or do you think with all the government spending that Obama's plan to do, we'll see gold prices rally? Um, I think for a while the market's probably going to stay on its slope where it's at right now, but I think within the next year, inflation will take place and the value of the gold stocks will increase exponentially, really. Um, I wish I had invested more in the middle of my stock project when gold was at its lowest because right now my ABX barrack is probably still down from what the price I invested at, but I think it, it will grow beyond what I invested it at. Anyone else? Um, you mentioned your parents in the college fund. Has that fund taken a serious hit in the last three months or was it in more money market, bond related uh, holdings? Well, some of it was in the safety stocks, Johnson & Johnson, all that stuff, but everything's taken a toll because everything's gone down. Um, I think I lost like 30% in my college fund, but it's a lot less than what I lost in this. Charlotte? Um, it seems like the stocks you chose, like they weren't generally very safe or like well known. Like if yeah. you were to do it again, would you what would you choose? Stuff in the um <coughs> the Dow Jones, those thirty, because those probably lost the least of anything. I don't know. Um I kind of just chose really random stocks. I don't know why. It was hard to find news and evidence on them. It was really annoying to do that. <laughs> um I originally had completely different five stocks planned, and the morning we came into school to actually buy our, the portfolio we had planned out, I was looking on my phone and everything was down a lot. And I, I wasn't aware of this whole stock market thing where it usually goes down over the weekend. Because over the course of this project, I learned that, but I didn't know that. So I just was searching for all these stocks that just had gone up slightly over the weekend. <laughs> And this is what I ended up with. All right, well, let's give it up for Amanda. Oh, uh, why would All right, so welcome to the Swing Dogs Fund. I thought I would start out with uh, three of the symbols of my portfolio. We have the nice, cute dog, which symbolizes me. Um, we have the bowl, which is what I hoped my fund would be. We have the bear, which is what actually happened. Um, my first stock is Walmart. It was founded in 1969 by a man named Sam Walton. He traveled the country, um, and he found out that people wanted a new type of discount retail store, so he made it. Um, it went public in 1972. It, uh, it is the largest retail chain in the world. It has the largest amount of employees in the world. Um, and it serves over 170 million people per year. Uh, the reasons I bought it, it's a blue chip stock. It's very solid. Um, I thought that since we were going to a bad economy, uh, people would be attracted to Walmart's low prices. Uh, it also had very, very good relative strength compared to other companies in the, in the industry. Uh, when I was looking in Google Finance, I saw stocks like Target. Walmart always outperformed them. So I thought it would do well. Um, what ended up happening? was that Walmart was actually very good for the first, well not very good, but compared to everything else, it was good for the first two weeks, it was the only stock that was still positive. Um, however, this quickly changed, but it did bounce back up. Uh, it had a very strong Black Friday, and it ended up being my best stock with a loss of just over 2%. Here's a graph, I compared it with the Dow Jones. You can see that, you know, even though they both went down, uh, Walmart went down significantly less than the Dow Jones. 
So I thought that was very good. Um, Walmart had a very good winter retail season so far. Even though there's very little consumer spending, it's still doing pretty well. Um, also, I, I, I think that if, it, if there wasn't a really bad economy, I think that Walmart would have done really well. I think it would have been positive, made me a lot of money. So I blame the recession. Um, Intel was next. Intel was founded in 1968 as the Integrated Electronics Corporation. Notice the bold Intel. They shortened it. Um, they combined advanced processor design for computers along with high performance manufacturing. They're uh, one of the biggest computer processors in the country. Most of you probably have an Intel chip in your computer or an AMD. I have an AMD, but let's not talk about that. Um, they began making semiconductors, but after the popularity of the PC in the 1970s, they moved into processors, and the rest is history. Um, down there, I have the Atom, which is their new processor. It was said to revolutionize the industry. It didn't happen yet, but that's okay. Um, the reasons why I bought it, it had the, its highest ever growth in the second quarter of 2008, which struck before we started investing, so I thought that it would continue to grow and continue to make money. Um, it's also a major force in the PC industry. They make a lot of chips. They make a, a lot of computers. They're, they're very solid. Um, they also had the new processor that was going to be released. It was said to revolutionize the industry. Um, they said that it would do more with less space. Also hasn't happened yet, but that's okay. Um, what ended up happening was Intel was my second worst stock. It went down just over 30%. The reason being, you know, there's uh, not a lot of demand for PCs. People are trying to cut back. People are learning to live with their old PCs now because they can't really spend the money for a new one. Onto the chart, as you can see, Intel below the Dow. Um, it didn't do, it, it, it wasn't my worst stock but it didn't do that great. It was pretty much down from the beginning. Never really had a shot. All right, my next stock was ExxonMobil. Um, Exxon and Mobil were two companies that came from John D. Rockefeller Standard Oil. Uh, they are headquarters in Texas, and in 1999, in the largest merger in US corporate history, they became the gigantic ExxonMobil Corporation. Uh, ExxonMobil recently posted the largest quarterly profit ever at $14.8 billion. They make a lot of money. Um, you know, they have oil, Exxon, mobile stations. I fill up at, at the mobile station. Um, they're also the largest company in the world by revenue and by market cap. So the reason why I bought it, they're as blue chip as it gets. They're a very big, solid, reliable company. Uh, oil was still relatively high at the time we were buying stocks. Not so much now. Um, so what, what happened with Exxon was that you know oil started to fall as soon as we started investing. It's now below $45, uh, things are not too good. Uh, however, you know, Exxon is still very solid. It was my second best stock. It went down just over 5%. So like Walmart, I think that Exxon would have done well if we weren't in a recession. This graph is slightly misleading. It's as of December 8th, so it's up, but we sold on December 5th, so disregard that. It's around here when we sold, so it was, it was still negative. Um, but as, as you can see, it was far and away better than Dow Jones, so that was very good. Also, uh, Exxon size, as you can see, the volume, it was being traded, you know, 100 million shares a day, almost. So that is a lot. Um, Raytheon was my next stock. It was founded in 1922 by two college engineering roommates and their friend who was a scientist. They started out making refrigerator technology and electronics. In World War II, they were making radar for the U.S. Army. And in 1945, a Raytheon scientist was working with radar, and he made the microwave, which we all know and love today. Um, yes, they also create the Patriot missile, which you can see right here, which is used in national defense, which is very important. All right, so the reasons why I bought it. First, I'm not going to lie to you. I talked to Sam Stone before the project. He said to buy it. I trusted him. I don't trust them anymore, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, also, the U.S. is in two wars, Iraq, Afghanistan, we're also in other armed conflicts. There's always going to be a, a demand for, you know, radar, technologies. Also, everyone wants defense, you can never be too safe. We all need missiles and things to protect us. So Raytheon is always going to be in demand. Their services are very important. Uh, they're one of the biggest and most reliable military contractors in the world. 
Uh, also, I thought that Obama would win, but just in case McCain won, you know, I wanted to have my bases covered, and I knew that Ray Down would go up if McCain won because he is more, he has a larger affinity, shall we say, for war and for uh, using Raytheon services. Uh, what ended up happening was that Obama was elected, which wasn't terrible for the stock. It didn't really make it go down, but it didn't really help it either. Uh, it went down just over 14%, so it was in the middle. It was my third best stock. So it wasn't bad, it wasn't great. Uh, as you can see, pretty much in line with the Dow. The Dow went down 30% over the time of our investment, so as you can see, it's pretty much in line with that. Uh, my next stock, Sun Power. This was probably the worst decision I've ever made in my life, <laughs> um, but we'll get to that later. It was founded in 1985 by a Stanford professor, Dr. Swanson, and uh, it's based in California. They make high efficiency solar products. They make solar electricity. Fun fact, they, they hold the world record for efficiency with a photovoltaic cell. Uh, it is just over 23%. Um, so the reasons why I bought it, I thought that an Obama victory would be good for alternative energy. You know, he was saying we need to get, get rid of our dependence on foreign oil. Um, so he won, that didn't really help it very much. It also had a high PE ratio. Its PE ratio was over 137, which means that the solar industry and the company in particular had a lot of potential. Um, also, the high oil prices at the time, you know, when, when there's high oil, there is a uh, higher demand for not oil, because people don't want to pay for oil, and solar is pretty cheap, so I thought that would also work well. Um, nothing worked out like I planned. As you can see, I have the sad sons on the bottom. I thought these were crucial. I put it three times to show my displeasure with this stock. Um, the value decreased a lot, over 62%. You know, oil went down, which made solar demand also go down, similar to Exxon. Uh, it just was not very good at all. So, as we can see, the chart, not very good. <laughs> Note this large dip right here. One of the biggest things that affected this stock was that partway through the project around right there, uh, Sun Power came out and said that the U.S. dollar strengthening which is going to cut into our profits. Immediately that day, as you can see, the volume shoots up. Over 8 million shares were sold, which is a lot for this company. Uh, my, the stock lost almost 30% of its value at that time. Yes. Um, so that was not very good at all. After that, it was short sold. It just kept going down. It went up slightly towards the end, but not enough to make it anywhere at all. So here's my overall fund. Note the red that I used for the chart. That symbolizes that my portfolio was in the red the whole time. Um, you know, as you can see, after the first couple weeks, it shot down, then it just kind of fluctuated along with the market. Uh, pretty much going to look like everyone else's, but that's how it went down. Um, things that I learned from, from the project, I learned a lot about the stock market. I was able to talk to my mom. Apparently, she is very involved. She has a lot of investments. She reads Money Magazine, so I can talk to her about it now. Now I have something else to talk about other than college, which is good. Um, we can also talk about my college fund, and she always talks about the FAFSA, which I don't really know what it was, and it's like all the investments. So now I can relate to that. I have learned a lot. I, I hope to you know, play the stock market when I'm older and uh, try and use what I learned here to be more successful. The reasons why I, I think things went down, you know, it was partly just the circumstances. We're in a bad economy. We're in a recession. It was not a good time to invest. Also, I think I had some bad luck because there was no way anyone was predicting oil was going to go down or that currency would I had no idea currency even affected Sun Power, let alone made it go down 30%. Um, so that also, I think I might have uh, made some slightly poor picks because you know uh, Sun Power and Exxon both relied on high oil prices. That didn't happen, so they both went down. Um, I could have been more diverse and more conservative in, in my portfolio, but I took some risks and they did not pay off. So uh, thank you for paying attention. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Do you think that Sun Power went down 30% in one day because, because of the U.S. dollar strengthening or because of speculation of what would happen? Probably both. I mean, on the day that that announcement came out, I remember looking at my portfolio and it was down. The, the price of the stock went down 30% in a day. 
And you know, I, I looked at the news and I saw that they said that the currency was going to cut into their prices. It, it, it made everything went down, uh, go down. So I think that it was partly just people speculating that, oh, they're not going to make any money in the fourth quarter and in 2009. Partly just the fact that people were like, oh, they're losing money now, we have to sell. Um, so pretty much both. Yeah. Albert? Uh, do you think it would be better to buy uh, some power now for the long run, being that uh, you might to, uh, move on to uh, alternative energy instead of gas? Um, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's, it's been going up the past couple weeks, but you know, just obviously I, I might have invested at a bad time. The 52-week uh, low, incidentally, was something like 140 to 18. Um, it hit 18 while I had it, and I bought it at 88, so that was a pretty big gap. Um, so I probably didn't buy it at, at the best time. I think that it, it has a lot of potential and it'll probably go up in the future, but uh, right now I would not recommend it. Anything else, Mr. Scott, what would you recommend? I have some new students starting uh, after the new year in a half-year semester uh, economics course that might be doing this project. What would you recommend? Um, I would recommend stocks that you know are solid, like Walmart, like Exxon, like Johnson & Johnson, um, th things like that that you know are always going to be in demand and always are going to do well or be better than the overall market, regardless of the, of the times. Don't, don't take too many risks. Though especially in the market that we have now. And do you plan on doing some trading in college or beyond? Um, I don't know about college, but you know, when I have money that I want to invest, I'll definitely do some trading. Maybe not stocks, maybe bonds, something more safe. But I, I definitely want to. This, this probably isn't going to be my last experience with uh, the market, I think. This isn't really a question for you, but um, it seems like you took risks and you still have some money. Like, who has more than him just in the class? I have just over 77. Oh. Yeah. Like, it seems like you did pretty well. For yeah, I mean, I, I blame some power for everything. I think that if I didn't have that or if I had a better stock, I could have given Albert and Jeremy a uh, run for their money, possibly beaten Albert by something around $2. Um, I don't know. I don't want to, like, get into my regrets and how much I hate Sun Power, but... Um, yeah. All right, well, let's give a nice round of applause. and how the money is just going down completely. Everybody's stocks are losing money. There's no gain, there's little gain really, so that's why I named it that. The first stock would be Exxon. I bought it um, because, you know, people need gas. That's a necessity. And a lot of people have cars because you know, the whole, it depends on where you're living at it at the same time, but, you know, a lot of people have cars and they need gas, so I chose to invest in Exxon Mobil Company. Um, it started about 125 years ago, and it sells oil, of course, crude oil, and it sells petroleum products. I invested um, about 20000 in it, and I lost um, $1,111. So I didn't lose that much of my money when I invested in it, but um, overall I think it was a good, a good stock to invest in. I didn't lose that much money. I had a lot of money left over, and it was for a good cost. Um, it's, yeah. The second stock that I invested in was the Kellogg stock. Now, Kellogg's is a food stock, and the founder was W.K. Kellogg. And I invested in this one because it was based on food. A lot of people need food, and when you think about stocks, you, you have to think about who or why would they want to buy it, and why is it important to invest in. And because of the money situation, people are going to buy food instead of more expensive things. So that's why I chose it. 
Um, it was the uh, it was actually the second best stock that I chose. Um, Exxon being the the stock that kept most of my money and Kellogg was the second. As you see on the graph, I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, although it was higher at one point and it did go down, it was still a little stable. So that helped me a lot. And then you know they sell, they sell cereal, they sell cereal bars, they sell a lot of different stuff. So they're, whatever they sell, it comes in a lot of varieties. The third stock that I chose was the Honda stock. I chose it because people need cars to get around. And it's hard to get around certain places depending on location and where you are living. So that's why I chose it. Um, it was first founded by, um, she, I don't have to pronounce his name. I'm going to call him Mr. Honda. And, yeah, he founded, at first they didn't do cars, they did motorcycles and stuff like that, and then um, eventually they progressed into making cars. Um, it was established, a, a storefront was established in um, 1959. That's where they um, first started, and it was in California, I believe. I lost um, $4,525 in this stock, which is not that bad compared to the other stocks that I have. So it was actually good. The fourth stock that I chose was Bank of America. One thing that I have to say about it is I wish I never invested in it. It lost me the majority of my money. Probably, I think, more than half of the money that I had. It just all because of this one. Um, it started in Massachusetts. It was originally named the Bank of Massachusetts, and it was signed off by Samuel Adams. Um, it started in 1784, and it's been around for a while during the um, wars and stuff. It started at a decent price, around in the 40s and 50s, and it's right now it's like 20 or maybe even like lower than 20 right now. The, they had, um, they were bailed out, and since they've been bailed out, I don't, I don't think that has done uh, any much of difference at all. I think it's still going to go down because they, they just need more money, and I don't think that the money that they got was good enough. The last stock that I chose was Google. Now, Google, I chose this one because. We're in the 21st century, and people need internet, and they need phones, and they need all that kind of stuff. So that's why I chose Google. Um, it earns revenues in um, advertising the internet, cell phones, search engines, and so forth. It was founded in California, and the founders were two guys, Larry Page and um, Sergey Brin. And they were college students, they were in their dorm and they were thinking about it and they like were were they were kind of not upset but sort of frustrated because they wanted to create something that would help that would help people their ages to be able to find out information really quick and be good enough information for them to use. So that's why they created um, Google. Google started at $442 originally, and now it's about $338, I believe. It didn't lose that much money in the this, in this stock, but at the same time, I feel as if this stock um, did a lot by losing the money. At first, all of these stocks that I um, bought I thought that they would be bullish and, you know, go up. I thought that Kellogg's would be a 
um, the tribe were dead. Yeah. But obviously everything went down. All these stocks right here are pretty much bearish, all of them. None of them increased that much at all. There was maybe two or three weeks that some of them increased, but all these stocks, they just went down. They weren't really that good. The only stocks that I can really say that are worth having are Exxon and Kellogg's. Everything else was pretty much what made my stock look like Dookie. So, semester, which starts right around February 1st, and they said, oh, I've got this stock project, this guy, Mr. Gurney's giving us this big thing where we got to find five stocks. What advice would you give that person? Come very prepared. Make sure that you know what you're talking about. Um, speak loudly and clearly when you're about to do your presentation. Um, try not to miss a uh, tracking log because it's hard to get that information, and it's confusing to get the information when you go back. And um, be better prepared, just in case anything happens. You know, if, you, if you're doing a, a um, PowerPoint, make sure that it works on the computer, because if not, then you'll be left doing it in the morning at seven o'clock. All right, the magnificent, the charming, and dreamy. <laughs> 